This is day 15 of getting to 1500 ELO on a brand new account. You're currently at 1355 and let's get started. Okay, we have the black pieces. All right, so my opponent plays d4 and I want to play the Karo Khan. And now some people were like, you can't play the Karo Khan against d4. Well, what it turns into, it turns into the Slav defense. The Slav defense is when, well, it's the structure. The d4 pawn is pushed and you have these two pawns like this. And okay. We just develop normally, we get our bishop out, we get our knight out, we push our pawns. Play very standard moves, you don't need to complicate the opening that much. Okay, he's offering a trade. Now I could go here and go for this weird line where you allow him to take and you get these two pawns holding this center. Now I'm not too comfortable playing that because I don't play that too often, so I'm just going to take. I'm just going to trade, keep it simple, and alright. Let's get our knight out and push our pawn and get our other bishop out. Maybe push this pawn, get our knight out. Just play very standard, very simple moves. Hmm, he pushes this. So I'm assuming he wants this move. Now is that a problem? We take, take, nope, and this pawn's going to be super protected. And if he pushes, we can drop back with our knight. So I don't see an issue if he tries to go for this move. And also leave some vulnerable weaknesses here so that if he pushes there might be a tactic of taking or some type of check but we'll have to see okay he goes here he adds more pressure to this square now if i go here and he goes here i could take first and then i'm hitting the knight he has to respond and then i can deal with whatever's going on here but i want to get my knight out and my bishop out that is my goal now if he gives me a check here okay but he doesn't so we can recapture with the bishop check uh, i don't like that check so maybe we just go here with our knight first, covering this square. Yeah, this is usually how you play it. You temporarily give up this pawn. But it's going to be very hard for him to protect it. If he goes here, well, his knight's a little bit misplaced on the rim. Again, if he goes somewhere like here, uh, what is my opponent thinking? That he can uh, fork me? Okay, we can block with our rook, and this is covered. And we're bringing our rook to the open file as well. I think this is a good move, defending the square once more and planning to recapture this pawn. We can also kick the knight later, but we have to address the threat of the fork first here on c7. And of course, if my opponent pushes the pawn, then we can just take this pawn. And that's the reason why we give up this pawn temporarily. And my opponents, you'll see this a lot at like the 1300 elo. When you don't have an attack right away, you get very antsy. You start throwing your pieces, even though you haven't developed all your pieces. And starts getting really bad, so I think we can recapture this pawn, getting ready to castle. We can also kick the knight away, but I'm preparing just a castle. This knight uh, could be a target in the future, so just playing it safe. Also, my opponent castled alongside, which is interesting, because if you notice, and this is something you should notice every single time your opponent makes a move, what has changed? Well, his king is on the same file as my rook, so if my bishop and my knight were to move away, this could be a target. Oh, and then he puts his queen right in front of it, which is also pretty interesting. Okay, so he moves his queen in front of my bishop, and of course, this is just a one-move attack. Uh, and there's many ways to deal with this. We can move our knights here uh, and threaten something. If he takes, if we castle and he takes, think about this. We castle, he takes, and we go here. Well, you can take the knight. That's the issue. Uh, and it's, I wanted to attack this square. We can go for it right away, bring our knights here, open up our rook. I don't see a reason why we shouldn't. And also threatens a little fork here on a2. And the reason my time went down is because there was somebody mowing their lawn. So I had to just sit here and think about the position. But it's very nice that my rook kind of looks at the queen through the bishop. So tactics like a discovered check might work. But you have to be careful. Discovered checks don't work if the piece that you want to capture can actually capture the piece that's giving a check. Okay, he goes here. So yes, they do stop this from happening. Now, I'm already thinking of a tactic of sacrificing our bishop and going check. Uh, they move here, but I don't see we're just gonna be winning a pawn. The king's gonna be slightly unsafe, but we're just winning a pawn. And I don't really see why that would benefit us. I'll be quite frank. Now, what we could do is that we can just take this pawn because if the queen were to take, then we have a discovered check. And if we take here in the king takes then we can take with our bishop winning this bishop because it's a discovered check i think we should go for it this looks like a tactic to me so no matter what he takes with we're going to be e either winning a pawn or an entire queen but of course let's look for even better moves so he takes with his king check he has to block or move away and we can take the bishop i mean that seems good enough to me 
It looks like we're actually winning two pawns in that scenario. Okay, let's give it a check. And our king's a little bit open, but I don't see a way that he can really exploit this. Except for this check. But now, since I can take the bishop, this check is not possible. Okay, and do we have anything better? Well, this is not a mate because this rook is here, so... We don't even really need to think about it. We could play a move. Well, we can't really do much, but... We have a very nice position. We won two pawns with that tactic. You just have to look out for things like that. Oh, my opponent moves their knight. Okay, they're attacking my rook. Now, where can I put my rook? Well, let's see. I could also just castle and see what happens, but... We can move our knights here. Put, put a rook here. There's not a really good way to attack it. And we can double up our pieces later. If he moves the knight, then he's just won a pawn. And if he starts doing this crazy stuff, that could be good. We could also... Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's go ahead and let's just move the rook onto this outpost. If they move their knights here, I can bring my bishop back. Overall, we just have a very comfortable position. If they start taking pawns like this, my opponent's going to be in a lot of trouble. Because they haven't developed any of their pieces. Oh, my opponent has moved. They have actually moved their knights. Okay. So they don't want to take this pawn. They just want to attack my bishop. Now again, we can just defend it. We could also go here, defending the pawn and the bishop simultaneously. Um, and I don't see why we shouldn't. We're also threatening... Well, we can't threaten the mate in one because there's two rooks here defending this. So I think we just bring our bishop back. And then we can castle. Yeah, we could have gone here, but... Keep our bishop very nicely tucked away where it can't be attacked or harassed. My opponent's most likely going to take this pawn and we are going to castle. Wow, they don't. Okay, they're just moving their pawns around. I think they should take this pawn, it looks free to me. If they don't take it after this, then I'm actually just going to start pushing my own pawns. And uh, securing everything, because I don't see the reason. I'm assuming that he just wanted to block off the diagonal, but wasting two moves to do that is just a poor waste of your time. And if they push this pawn, it lends me the square here with my knight. Notice how my knight can now jump to e4 if it wanted to. Very nice central square that can't be kicked away. But we do have to notice that his rook is looking at our queen through the pawn. So there actually might be a tactic like taking this rook and then taking the queen. But in that scenario, it's still a trade. So I don't think he would want to go for that. Okay, my opponent keeps pushing. You know what? There's too many tactics involving this. I don't like it. Maybe we should move our queen away. Do something like this. Okay, that's one idea. And then we can double our rooks. Uh, we can also do a discovered little discovered attack on the knight. The knight moves, we can move here, and that all looks pretty good for us. He's not threatening much here, because at the very end I can always tuck my bishop away. So, he's really just pushing his own pawns for really no reason. Okay. Let's go here, and let's take control of this open file even more if he goes here. Again, we're going to move our queen up to here, hit the knight, and also take control of some central squares. Okay, he's going full force at his <laughs> attack. Now, let's see. We have opened up the dark square for us. But he, okay, he's threatening a fork. Well, let's get out of it. We can go here. But the issue is, well, there's not really an issue. We can just move our knights. Put our knights here. If he decides to take, I'm okay with trading. Uh, where else can we put, put our bishop? I don't see really another square we, where we can put our bishop. Let's just push put it here because... Uh, we're going to be met with this move at some point. And if they go here, we could move here and defend this. And it would be on the edge. We can also move it here and think about moving our knight towards the center like this. And I think that's a little bit more mature of a move. Okay, we can also take with our queen. Um, and keep a rook on the outpost. And also, our queen's more in the middle, targeting some important squares. I kind of like that. And then we can double our rooks at some point. But also taking with the rook could be good, because then I can do this tactic of moving the knight away. But honestly, I think we should take with the queen. Our rooks deserve to be on open files. That's where they deserve to be. Now we just have to find a way to kick away this knight. If he takes this pawn again, I don't really care. Oh, so he wants to go for trades when he's down a pawn. Yeah, and this is... A common mistake you'll see. People that just want to trade, don't trade. It's not a good idea. Now, let's see, we can recapture with our queen and go into this endgame, but 
I don't see the reason why we shouldn't take with our Rook. Just trade down a ton of material. And let's see. Now, I want to get my Knight to a better square. Can we go here? Probably. Target this pawn. That seems pretty good. If, I, if they go here again, you can keep taking this pawn. I'm not sure why my opponent's not taking it. Okay. Let's reroute our Knight. To this square. If they go here... I'm happy to go here and target this pawn. This pawn's a goner anyways. I don't really care much about it. Okay. They finally have taken the pawn. Good job. So my opponent just realized, wait, that pawn was hanging the entire time? I should take it. Good job on my opponent for spotting that. And now we're just going to go after their pawns. If they defend it with the rook, I can take first and then give a check to get out of the pin. We also have... Moves like rook to b8 in the future with our queen defending it, hitting this pawn as well. Which could be a good tactic if we wanted to win the game. <laughs> My opponent just completely uh, leaves the king wide open. Now, if he takes, we take. He goes check. We go up. He goes check or he goes check with the queen. We can just leave here. And we're not really in a mating net. Uh, of course, if we take now, we are mating ourselves completely. That would be a blunder. So I don't think... I don't see a reason why we shouldn't take. Let's calculate. Take, take. We have a minute left. Take, take, take. Check up, check up, check up. We're going to be safe. Our king's going to be in the middle, but we're going to be safe. I have to move a little bit quicker. I can... I have less time for explanations and more time for just getting everything completely right. Okay, again... Uh, oh, but I forgot about this fork. That's unfortunate. I only saw this move, but this is a fork. Okay, my opponent's taking 20 million years. Uh, okay. I'm assuming they didn't really have a plan after they moved a rook. They kind of just were hoping that I would blunder a mate. So, okay, this is a fork. So we're going to have to try and win with an extra pawn versus a knight. And he's also a little bit low on time, so we need to play on time. I'm assuming my opponent's taking a lot of time because he's looking for a mate, even though there is just none. There's no mates here. There's check. I move up and I escape to this square. Let's see. Check here. Check here. Check. Ooh, there might be actually a mate. But he doesn't play it. Interesting. Let's give a check. We don't have time. If I can trade off the queens, I'm going to be very, very happy. Let's give another check. Again, I'm just giving checks because I need to get out of this predicament where, the, where I'm getting attacked here. Got my knight out of the fork. This is a little bit risky. I think there's actually a checkmate here. Uh, if he goes here, here, check. But now I have this square because my knight left. So now it's not checkmate anymore. Okay, it's 25 seconds. This is, uh, okay, only move. We don't have to think about it, which is pretty good. Let's see, 70 seconds. Is my opponent going to find it? Here and here, we can escape. We're lucky. Okay, he just has to play a move. Give me a check, brother. Come on. No, he's going to lose on time. Ah, that's unfortunate. Well, good game to my opponents. Let's go on to the next game. Okay, black pieces against a, a 1,254. Whoa! <laughs> I didn't know they still played this at this elo, where they just pushed this pawn. Uh, if you're starting out, don't start pushing these pawns. Just push your pawns in the middle. Uh, somebody's trying to be fancy here. And I'll play c6 against everything. It's a very solid structure, even though it's not the Karo Khan. Okay. All right, buddy. Let's see if this uh, setup works for my opponents. Okay, this pawn and then this pawn. And now there's a little hole here. If I can put a knight on this square like this, I would be pretty happy. But we can think about that later. Let's go here. I just like to notice things like this. Whenever you see two pawns that are no longer defending a square, notice how this these two pawns can never kick away a piece that's on the square. That means that we can maybe even put a knight on here. Especially if we can trade the light square bishops. We can get a nice outpost. Okay, my opponent moved their bishop and then redeveloped their bishop backwards. Got it. Now we could go here, hit the pawn, and he might play a weakening move like this, but really don't need to try and capitalize. He's decided to push two pawns and then uh, go for something completely different. Maybe his little brother was on his computer and took over. And then he came back and was like, Hey, what are you doing? Wait, why'd you, why'd you push this pawn and why'd you develop the bishop? And then he bring it all back. He's like, you silly boy. Stop messed. Stop playing the wrong moves. But okay, now he's <laughs> moved his bishop multiple times. 
I wonder if this has worked for my opponent in the past. Uh, let's let's move our bishop here. I like to uh, be able to move my knight if I like to. This is a very juicy square for my knights, given that this square is no longer protected by a pawn, which means I can take control over it. Let's go for it. I like this. I noticed that we can take control over this. Let's go for it. Here we're threatening a, a pawn. Let's see if my opponent notices, if they're hyper aware. I'm assuming they'll play a move like uh, this, pushing the pawn forward to c3 to defend it. Or, yeah, a move like this as well. But now we can get castled. Play it safe. safe. Whoa! <laughs> He's really opening up the board. Now, I'm not really scared of him taking this pawn because I have a pretty good uh, secured pawn here. It's secured by two pawns. So, I think we should start chipping away at his structure. If we push our pawn here and he takes, then we can really start to chip away. Uh, and if he pushes, then we can take this pawn for free, because if he takes, notice how our rooks are looking at each other through the pawns. If we take and this pawn takes, our rooks are looking and it's my move, so I can take a rook for free. So again, if he pushes, I'm not worried, we can take a pawn. Uh, if he takes, I'm not worried, because he's ruining his structure, we can go here, put a lot of pressure on this pawn. And he's not castled. He doesn't have enough pieces out, and he's also not castled, which is the worst of both worlds. Because usually you can trade one for another, but in this case he just has none of them. Okay, they push. Now this is something I didn't really expect to see. I'll be quite honest. So if we take take, okay, that's one move. What else do we have? Well, we could also push. Um, and that could be a good way to really break into the center and put pressure on this weak pawn. Now the one downside is that he can take and really ruin the structure. But given that he's not castled, I'm okay making that one little concession try to open up the board, try to get my queen involved, because he hasn't castled yet. I'm okay ruining my structure, because I think we can get a good attack. Now is our opportunity to open up the board. Okay, he takes here. I think we can take here without really thinking. Uh, it opens up our queen, uh, no matter which way he takes. So we can give a check, and his king is most likely forced to move. Oh, he takes with the knight. Got it. So... I thought he wanted his knight over here. So I didn't expect he would make a move like this. So, okay, our bishop's kind of under attack. We can defend it. We can also give a check first. And, well, if he goes here, then we can take. And he cannot take, because we have a discovered check. So, yeah, I don't see a reason why we shouldn't get our queen a little bit more involved. Also, hitting this pawn, we might be able to win it. But this is more of like an in-between move. Okay, my opponent is comp contemplating really the only move they have in this position, which is to block with the knight. Uh, if they block with the queen, we take. If they move, I mean, do you really want to move? We have, might have a check here. Just really opening up the board, opening up the position. It wouldn't be too comfortable if you were to do that. And also, if you move up, there's a check, which might win the rook. So knights here to d2 seems to be the only move. King up, we have a check. Uh, winning the rook, but they can block with the knight, but then we can take. It just gets very messy for my opponent with this king in the center. If they move their knight here, do we take? We could. I mean, he's pinned. We don't really need to do anything. But then he might hit us with a move like this. Ah, but our bishop's going to be looking at that if we can take. It's all weird and convoluted. I think we can make it work. Okay, he goes there. Now, should I take? I could. I could also take here and open up the d file which is a good file to open up. Uh, if they were to move the rook here, that's the only thing I'm really concerned about. We could trade, but we have an attack going, and I don't want to do that. Mm. And he could be capturing this uh, bishop in the long run. I don't want that. We can take. He moves his rook here. We go here. He takes and takes. He gets a little bit safer than I want him to be. Uh, but then if we trade, that's not the best for uh, either of us either of us as well. Huh. This is a tricky, tricky game. What should I do? I think we should bring our bishop back. Uh, not worried if he takes, and we can bring our queen back if we get attacked. Open up this if we need to. Yeah, I think that's what we should do. Let's go for it. Let's bring our bishop back. Uh, even though we might, it might seem like we're attacking here, still want to be nice and conserve. Want to conserve everything. Now they move the rook here. We cannot take because they can take first. And here, we're thinking about moving a rook here to uh, take control of the c-file a little bit, still put pressure on this pawn. 
If he takes, I'm okay with the take with the bishop. And my general game plan would be to move my knight, bring my rook onto the c-file, maybe double my rooks, maybe open up the d-file as well and attack down that plane. Really, there are a lot of ways of going about this position. Ooh, okay, so they attack my queen. So, okay, let's see. So we're pinning this. We cannot take because he can take first. Uh, all right. What else? Well, we can take. Take, take, takes, and then takes the knight. Notice how we're just trading down our pieces. Uh, knight takes here. And then we can take with the bishop, but he can take with his queen. Uh, so I don't really see that as a proper solution. We can also move our queen here. Uh, really get into the mix of everything. That might not be a bad idea, given that we're threatening taking here. Yeah, I don't see a way that he can instantly attack me, unless he moves his rook here. Uh, in that case, that might be bad, but I don't think we should overcomplicate it. Okay, I'm going to err on the side of safety, keep my queen out of all the danger. There's too many things to consider, so I'm just going to go here, keep our solid position that we have. Okay, they just move again. Uh, again, one move threat, so you don't want to keep moving, because now my uh, my knight has control over these squares. So this isn't the brightest move. We can move our queen back this way. We can also move it back this way. But I like putting our queen here. X-ray the knight with tactics. Yeah, that should be good. Let's go here. Again, if he takes, uh, opening up the d-file is just not good for him, even if he were to win a pawn. Okay, let's see. One, two attackers. That seems about right. Let's take. We have two attackers and he has one defender. And that seems pretty good. Is there any checks that he can give that would scare me? Is there a way that he can trap my queen somehow? Nope, my queen can always move away. I don't see what he's doing here. I think that's a free pawn. And it's a very important pawn as well. If he defends with the rook, we can take, take, and then take the knight here and win an entire piece for free. If they push the pawn, I think I can just move my king forward. Okay. Now let's see. We can move our knights back and be happy. But I like the fact that we are going for this. I don't see a reason why we shouldn't bring our knight into the uh, center of the board. We could also go here. But no reason yet. Here's what. I have an idea. Let's put our rook here and go for a little discovered attack against this knight. We can trade off the knight somehow. Okay. So he moves his bishop here. Now we can move our knights, but... Okay, let's create a one move a one move threat. Oh, I forgot our bishop is going to be blocked off. My bad. I forgot our bishop's going to be blocked off here. Uh, but again, we have a fork here. And that's a threat. We also have a check. Which is highly uncomfortable, because if you block with the queen, we take the rook. Um, and I'm assuming my opponent will most likely castle in this scenario. Right. And that might be a mistake. Because we can go here, fork the king, sorry, the queen and the bishop. Uh, when the queen moves and recaptures this bishop, then this will become a free piece. Because our bishop, our queen, and our rook are looking at this. Oh, okay. So my opponent has gone for the, the Botez Gambit variation. And I'm assuming that in his mind he's thinking, okay, I'm going to lose my queen, but... But, I'm going to double his pawns. Hear me out. That's probably what's going on in his head. I do not blame him. You see, beginners love to double people's pawns. Even if it's giving up away their whole entire queen, if you can double their pawns, it's completely worth it. Regardless, he was either going to lose a queen or a piece in that scenario. Because I can show you guys. Uh, let's say he were to move his queen. Well then, if I take the knight, he takes with his queen. I take, takes. There are three attackers and two defenders of this knight at the end of the day. So that it will be unfortunate. My opponent has one minute left. No, I don't, wanna, I don't want you to lose on time. If I were my opponent, what I would try in this scenario is move your rook here, give up your bishop, and then move your knight to this square. Try to get a discovered attack against the queen. If that doesn't work and I find it out, sure. But you might win the queen back. Who knows? Okay. And yeah, my opponent abandons the game. Well, good game to my opponent. I would say, as advice, don't move your bishop three times in the opening. 
I also want to mention that I'm offering beginner chess coaching. If you're 1,100 ELO and below and you're looking to get to 1,500 ELO, I can help you out. So go to the website, link in my description, and fill out the form, and I'll get back to you by email. And today we end off with 1360 in rapid. Well, that will end off day 15, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.